Interventions with a King. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack, Cardiovascular Interventions. Hi, Dr. David Moliterno. I'm Chief of Cardiovascular Medicine at the University of Kentucky and also an Associate Editor for Jack Cardiovascular Interventions. I'm joined today by Roxana Marin, who is Professor of Medicine in the Cardiology Group at Mount Sinai Hospital in New York. She's also the Director of Cardiovascular Research there. And uh, Roxana is going to talk to us today about a paper that's coming out in Jack Intervention soon, dealing specifically with chronic total occlusions. A tough topic, not easy to study, not too many randomized trials for sure, but you've got a very large cohort, followed for a long time. Kind of give us the bottom line. So thank you for having me, and thank you for featuring this uh, particular study that is a uh, work of uh, many, many, uh, three centers in particular. Um, coming together with over 1,700 patients who presented with a chronic total occlusion and in whom the chronic total occlusion was attempted. Um, and uh, we have 2.9 years of follow-up in these patients. So a, a really great group of number of patients. What we found, very interestingly, what we reported was the uh, success rate, which was 60% in the first attempt and overall 65%, hmm. uh, which meant that you can bring patients back and reattempt. Um, what we found that in those patients with a successful um, recanalization of CTO, that things went very well for them. They avoided bypass surgery, um, they avoided myocardial infarctions. Uh, most of them, three quarters of them, were, uh, were treated with, um, or about 30% 30, 30 of them were treated by, with a drug eluting stent. Uh, and uh, the other with bare metal stent. So it gave us an opportunity to take a look at the outcome of BMS versus DES and uh, see how that goes, which was so, really so, great. So you're being a bit modest, I think. This is probably one of the largest uh, studies, longest uh, uh, follow-up, and, in, in, and you had almost an 80% reduction in the need then for bypass surgery. So mm -hmm. what I think happened, at least, is you took some patients who might otherwise have gone to bypass and really substantially lowered the likelihood of that happening beyond a mortality benefit, which is something we haven't seen heretofore. So what do, what do you think about that? Well, I think that uh, it gives us a, in, in, first I think it's important to recognize that these were high, high volume tertiary referral yeah, point. Uh, yeah. centers with great experience and amazing operators uh, and access to all of these um, uh, important new technologies and, and wires and things as such that have really, really improved and enhanced our ability to treat chronic total occlusions. That's an important, I think, an important element to talk about. That's but how you got to this nearly 70% success rate. 70% success rate, and I think that that was quite good. Um, and you were able to, these, these patients otherwise would have to go to bypass surgery. In fact, those patients who did not have a successful CTO did end up at some point going to bypass surgery. And, and then the next uh, major thing, I think, before I get your, your summary thoughts, is that, and in fact, those patients who got a drug eluting stent, target lesion revascularization was lowered a fair amount, wasn't it? Uh, it, was, it was significantly reduced uh, by almost uh, half, you know, yeah. by about 50%. And importantly, because we had three year follow up, we found that definite and probable stent thrombosis actually occurred at an equal, at an equal huh, interesting. level. So what's the take home message uh, for, for the viewers? So the take home message is that if, if you have access, uh, if there is a, a chronic total occlusion with a high burden of ischemia, and I think it's really important that we actually have viability and ischemic and, and, a, and a good indication for opening the CTO. And in those cases, in a high volume center, with, uh, with expert operators, you are able to, about 65 to 70 percent of the time, have a successful recanalization. And in those patients, you are able to avoid bypass surgery, reduce important clinical events, and that treating them with drug eluting stents seems to be safe and efficacious. Terrific. Thanks so much. Thanks uh, to Roxana Marin. I'm David Moliterno again joining you for Jack Cardiovascular Interventions.